psychology and social behavior major, and I'm running for external vice president. And so, uh, COPPA has been my family for two years now, and I really feel like um, being in this family has been a solid foundation for uh, really developing to what the person I am today. And I really see a lot of possibilities for what we could do to represent COPPA by the different communities that uh, we're around, such as the UCI community and also the Filipino American community. And also with my different involvements around campus, and I really, really want to make sure that um, I provide general members with the resources and opportunities for uh, general members to really grow in their interests and also encourage general members to really explore different opportunities that are present in Kampawaiya, the UCI community, and the Filipino American community. Uh, uh, my name is Oliver. Uh, many of you know me as your academics coordinator. Um, Woo! This past year, I've grown so much in Kaba. I was an intern my freshman year, and then I grew into becoming a board member. This past year, I learned so much being a board member, by growing my leadership skills, growing my exter uh, externalizing experiences, and I believe the experiences that I, I learned from this past year's board has brought me to like want to extend it out to next year's board and like have make like shape those experiences for next year's board and make sure that will be like available for everyone and so that my experience will be shared with everyone else too. Yeah. Hi guys. Oh, hi y'all. Um, I'm Cheryl Buchanan. I'm the current. I'm currently your community advocacy coordinator. I'm running for uh, EVP because I feel like um, we need. Uh, I want to run for EVP, EVP because it's an extension of uh, community. I feel like it's a uh, so part of community advocacy. And uh, this year, I wanted to challenge my challenge myself more, so I'm I decided to run for uh, EVP. And um, I think that we should uh, strengthen our bonds with Alianza and um, outreach more to the community, and as well as uh, show general members the other uh, resources out there that are available. things I've learned was that alumni has a lot of history in Kaba. You know, alumni has a lot of history that has um, proceeded to do be uh, greater and bigger things for the Filipino community. And I believe that by um, being in contact with our alumni liaison, and not only that, the coalition liaison, will help me externalize and help um, like help alumni bring back their stories so that we can start learning about their, their experiences, experiences and like understand what they're com coming from and see where, like what organizations they built on their own so that it has a greater connection between Kaba alumni and Kaba current Kaba members to go easier an easier pathway for them to go to the organizations that they build. So yeah. The question was how uh, we're gonna externalize uh, get Kaba uh, known out there more. Um, I agree with Oliver, I think we should util utilize the sources available like uh, alumni also networking outside like I know uh, used to be really close with uh, TDB and I want to strengthen that bond. Also other um, other resources like Kupa, uh, Anakbaya, and KMB. And also, uh, this year we started HSO, and that's basically we're, we're outreaching to uh, high school students. And just by going there to the other high school students, we're, uh, we're making Kaba Bayan pre uh, presence and influencing them uh, about uh, Kaba and just basically the Filipino community on campus here at ITM. Starting off with externalizing Kaba to the Filipino American community, I really want to make sure that. Um, I really get to network with a lot of the Filipino organizations around the community, such as kind of Anakbaya and KMB. And I also really want to network with the alumni because, like what Oliver said, I know that they're really involved in the, uh, the events and programming that's happening around outside of the community. And also with uh, UCI, I really want to make sure that we improve our relations with Alianza, the Cross Cultural Center, and also with just the general UCI community because I really know that in collaboration with all of this we could really learn from it and just like come up with a, a bigger outcome than what we do just as a plan. Next year, um, I just have uh, the Air Force program that I'm doing it, uh, doing, and also if I don't get uh, EVP, of course I'm going to still come out to the Kaba, uh, dedicate my time to the Ate, uh, yeah, Ate or uh, So for me, um, the other time commitment that I have is, other than school, would be uh, being a Mason Core RA. And I know that's like um, a big responsibility in itself for next year, but I also feel like as EPP, I could really couple those two together because RAs are really supposed to know what's going on around on campus. So I could really forward that information to the general members as well and really let them know what's going around on campus and making sure that the general members and also my residents are able to, I, I'm able to balance them and really inform everybody about what's going on around campus.
Understanding how much external vice president has in, in store for them, especially with a lot of activities and like making sure externalizing and bringing it back to Kaba. My only job for next year would be only EVP, making my dedicated time to make sure that all the stuff that I want to externalize towards to, externalizing outside to the Filipino community and the alumni for next year, is it's, it's the only job that I have next year. And not only that, but also just being a Kaba board member if I were to get the position. And so that'd be my time. So, being the Alliance of Programs coordinator for this year, um, so going back to that, uh, being the Alliance of Programs coordinator for this year has really taught me about the dynamics of how Alliance Exec Board works, and also how the four organizations really work together. So, one of the big things that I really want to implement is the fact that to make sure that our different programmings for within each of the organizations aren't clashing with each other, because I know that was a problem that Diane actually mentioned in her platform was the fact that. Um, that for some reason, like the programming for Histolicity was also clashing with like Passes program. So that I really want to make sure that that happens and that we have more collaborations earlier on in the year so that uh, general members actually are able to interact with each other and get to know everybody from the different orgs. Um, so let's talk about bonding and Allianz and how we make our like, uh, forces stronger, right? Um, what I truly believe in is in order for us to get that bond stronger with each other, I, I want to implement that making externals and the boards first know what they want to do as Alianza together so it can reflect as a whole club. Um, what I liked about this year, what, although it was later on in the year, we did a presidential roundtable which brought us together as an Alianza org. And I felt like from there, our relationships as Alianza got a little bit stronger. Um, from the beginning of the year, we didn't know each other as board members. And what I want to do and make sure for next year's Alianza board or all the Alianza boards is make sure we come together before the school year starts so that we all know what we want to do as an Alianza org on campus. I'll definitely, definitely agree with Oliver. Um, I think that uh, we should come together before uh, before the school year starts and uh, think of a mission statement, one common mission statement. Because from there, we can uh, we have that one common like goal, so we can succeed to that one goal. And for, uh, from there, also like add in like more like getting to know each other, bonding time. Like I said, like last week, um, having a retreat where all the boards come together so that we map out map out all the scheduling and so it doesn't conflict. And also, what I like uh, what I want to do is. Uh, what I like about uh, uh, like couple board dynamic is they have the appointed boards, so I want to have like appointed boards within Alianza, so we we keep that communication. I beat honey milk tea because I'm sweet like honey. <laughs>
the political issues, and from there, you can make your own decisions. I never want to uh, influence or sway anyone to uh, side with, uh, with a political issue. But other than that, I just want to present the issue so that you're uh, aware. So for me, um, I really want to make sure that general members know about what's going on around the community, which is one of the transparency issues I saw in the political side of things. And what I really want to make sure for COPPA by it is for that the general members know what's going on and really encourage them to uh, be active in all these things because just participating in your community and really knowing what's going on uh, really helps make a difference in like the outside world and not just like in the UCI community but also in like the Filipino American community and really like making a difference and like making history happen. Um, I'm agreeing with both what um, Cheryl and John said. It's getting education, uh, educated from the bottom, you know. In order for you to take a stance on something that is very political or something that maybe like small political, like has a political aspect, you know, it's getting the base of education on it. I want to bring it to you all to like make sure you all understand what's going on and then like bring it up to you in, in a general meeting, you know, um, and see if we all agree if we want to take it as a stance as one or or just being educated about it in all. Like education, the base root of it, and like knowing what's going on is what's more important than <coughs> taking a stance on it. So what I like what you mentioned, I really liked how Paul really brought back Kavakon, and I really want to make sure that I continue uh, with that tradition next year and making sure that Kavakon happens. Something that I would want to do next year, that, uh, which is really making sure that TAPS is actually happening. So I really want to introduce TAPS like in the very, very beginning of the year, like in fall quarter, because like my plan of it, like my thought process is like a three-step process in where it's really informing uh, general members about what's going on during fall quarter, winter quarter, we'd be like organizing committees within all Yonsa so that we have like a bigger population of Filipino Americans advocating for this, and also taking action during spring quarter and really okay. Um, <laughs> I uh, I also like that fall when I bring back Kabukon this year. Um, through that, um, I started to understand like what it meant to what Kabukon and Kabukon meant as a whole thing. It was that space to learn about your culture and learn about the struggles that our culture was brought. So one thing I critique about Paul is learning to externalize more, you know. Um, one thing that we, as a board this year, we externalized kind of late, and I kind of want to bring that attention in the beginning, like during summer where the board meets, like trying to teach them what it means to be, like get that foundation of Kalabayan and what it means to externalize as a whole instead of just external vice president, but as a board. Um, one thing uh, to about Paul, let's see. Uh, so I really like how he really uh, he brought back Kabukon and agreeing with both of them. Uh, it's definitely a great space for everyone to just be poli more poli politically aware and uh, be more educated. Um, and agreeing with Oliver, I think we could exter externalize more, but I feel that um, we or externalizing shouldn't just uh, stop at Alianza. Why why can't we go to BSU? Why can't we go to Mesha? Why can't we go to like the, these other orgs? Why why should it just stop at the Filipino community? It should uh, even go, it should go beyond. Um, like the other communities that we have on campus. A lot of the challenges I do understand is um, getting everyone educated, you know. Uh, a lot of things that external does, um, even though it's a bad stereotype, is understand the political aspects of a lot of things. And um, a lot of the like things is making sure that everyone on board, along with Kal Kalawain, is to have everyone on the same page. And by through that, I just want to know that I just want to make sure everyone gets educated before anything else happens and stuff like that. Okay, one challenge I see is um, like being caught up in being caught up in the like political aspects, like not choosing a side, try, uh, just to be neutral, like listening on both, <coughs> on both ends, and not like just taking a stance, kind of thing. Or so I, uh, one of the challenges I see uh, as EVP is really gaining an interest in the Kalabayan general members to come out to cer some certain events. Because I know that Kalabayan general members come in with a certain interest, whether they want to involve themselves more in cultural aspects or social aspects. So I really want to encourage general members to step out of the crumbstone stone just a little bit so that they could really experience the different aspects that um, Kaba has to offer, whether that be through like more political activism or um, learning more about the community and like involving yourself more with that. with the community because like the, the community is like there for you like you should always give back to the community and I feel like um, <coughs> growing up as a uh, college student like um, yeah uh, just, just giving back to the community because like uh, the community has been there for you you know kind of thing so I feel like you, there's never like too much involvement in the community. <laughs> yeah so kind of going off of what 
what Cheryl's saying, uh, was that I really don't feel like uh, you can never be too involved um, in the community because there's always something to do in the community, whether it's helping um, the Filipino American community in LA or also just like hosting, hosting HSO. So I feel like we have time to dedicate to each of these communities and we're able to really um, equalize our time so that we can involve ourselves in the different communities so that we can give back to like the greater like, community. I agree with uh, what John and Cheryl have to both say. Um, there's nothing too bad about externalizing and being involved in the community. You know, it's like culture, going back to culture. Culture is every day, and the, what happens in the community is every day. Small things happen, <laughs> small things that are like some issues that need to be brought up, or like even giving back to the community, you know. Um, I feel like so much, so much of the Filipino community, or even the UCI community, have, uh, community have brought so much to us that we need to return it back and being involved in it. Well, for me, I really feel like um, giving. Uh, well, it's like primarily giving uh, general members kind of first what they want, just so, just so that like it is like what they come into Kabul for. This is like what they're coming here for, for social aspects, for like like any of these aspects. But also, I really want to encourage um, general members to give what they need to, because also you come in here to learn about like the culture and the political side of things as well. It's not just like the social parts. And I really feel like uh, encouraging those general members to look into these different aspects and also making sure that they learn from this and that. <coughs> For me, I agree with John. Um, a lot of things is uh, giving them what they want so that they can come to get what they need. Um, I believe then, like, if you're in order to give them stuff that they want, it's going to turn into something they need in their life. Uh, like, say, like, like you know, HSO. <coughs> It's, it's a program that like, a lot of people wanted to do, but then it turned into something they needed to do for the outside community. You know? Those are one of the things that I learned through HSO, and like, by like, facilitating it, that want of doing HSO became a need, and I believe like, in wanting it's going to be turning into a need, so yeah. Uh, being like the milk tea I am, the 50-50, um, I want to give <laughs> both the best world and give them uh, both uh, what, the student, uh, what the members want, because it is a student organization. I'm here to serve you. Uh, it's not. It's not the other way around. And um, um, uh, with the need part, uh, it's what, what sometimes what you want is not always good for you. And so it's you. You have to kind of go with that need, like with that need kind of thing. So uh, you lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, just giving giving them the best of both worlds because like so, uh, like just having uh, your voice be heard. Yeah. First and foremost, I want to say thank you all for um, like listening to what I have to say about extra vice president and my new position as board. If I were to get it next year, um, I want to let you know like no matter what you vote, um, these two candidates are truly people like who I give trust to, and like as Colorado, you all should like understand like what you all want as a club. Um, thank you for it. Um, the experience that I learned from board is something that I wouldn't change, and this doesn't stop me from being involved in Kalva. It literally just continues to make me grow and see what ways I can change, like be a change in Kalva. So yeah. I want to say thank you for staying here after the meeting and listening to what we have to say. And um, yeah, uh, like Oliver said, these 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 two other candidates, like I truly trust them with um, EVP because uh, no matter what, I know they'll do. Uh, they'll have Kaba in their best interest and uh, unleash that potential that Kaba might have. So thank you. And I want to say congratulations to my cases for winning president. Aww. Okay, so again, my name is John Salazar, and I'm running for your Senate Vice President. And I feel like uh, as an external vice president, I could really offer you a lot of the networking skills and programming skills that I've really attained in my college career. But also, uh, I also really want to thank each and every one of you for listening to our platform and what we had to say because like, just standing up here, like, I really learned a lot about like, Cheryl and Oliver and what they have to offer. And I feel like that either one of these candidates you choose is just like um, a really good position for next year and that like, any one of us can do a really good job with it.